technique, leverage, persistence. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is a grappling art. Um, one way to think about it, it is, it is derived from Japanese Judo and it was developed specifically to focus on ground control and ground attacks using submissions. There are two kind of submissions, chokes and joint blocks. And the idea of fighting on the ground is that the ground is an equalizer, meaning it doesn't matter how strong you are. Once you get taken down, if you know how to use technique and leverage, you can actually overcome someone much stronger. Now, Jiu-Jitsu and Jiu-Jitsu teams tend to be very closely knit communities. When you do Jiu-Jitsu, you are really close to the other person. I mean, you cannot be any closer. And that physical closeness creates very strong bonds of friendship and connection. Also, in Jiu-Jitsu, safety is very important because many jiu-jitsu moves are potentially very dangerous. Some can even be lethal. So once you start training with somebody, trust becomes very, very important because basically you are trusting them with your life. So what I see is, is you know, people come in, after a few months, we become really close because of this trust we have in each other. Even though it's an individual sport, you can only become good by helping others grow and by training others uh, to get better and better. The number one priority yeah. is to continue to grow the community, uh, to bring as many people as I can, as we can to Jiu Jitsu. Um, so over the past 10 years we have grown from basically two individuals being on the mats to now it's, we have about 30, 30 plus members. Um, and I would like to see this grow exponentially over the next couple of years. I think there are a lot of good things happening. Um, you know, the popularity of MMA uh, the, um, around the world. So I think all of that is helping. Um, so definitely strengthening the community. Um, also, I mean, at a personal level, uh, what I want to do is to develop some really good guys who can beat my ass. So I think as a coach, um, my happiest moments are when my own students uh, get the better of me, you know? And I think that's a very important mentality to have as a coach. You are, not, you are not God, you are not untouchable, you know? And if you do a good job, then your students can and should beat you. Um, and my personal aspiration is, of course, to continue to grow, you know? Um, both as a teacher and as a practitioner of jiu-jitsu and like I said um, you know I, I just I just want my game to be versatile and smooth and and I want to enjoy this sport into my old age you know I want to be 80 90 years old far long white beard I want to come with a cane jump on the mat and roll with the young guns you know that's what I hope for I have some I have a seat back on somebody and I have my legs up, these are called the hooks. So if you think about it, just from a self-defense perspective, he cannot see me. He cannot kick me. He can punch me, but his punches are not going to be very effective. And I have access to his neck. So this is considered one of the most superior positions in Jiu-Jitsu. Probably the best, right? And if you think about the animal kingdom, have you ever seen a, a lion attacking a, a wildebeest? How do they attack? From they the jump on the back. Mm -hmm. Or the other one to see is when the jaguar attacks the crocodile. Uh -huh. They attack from the back. Even Steve Urban. <laughs> he actually did jiu-jitsu to learn how to control crocodiles because it's all about taking the back. Right? Because from here, even you are a pro, you are not very effective. Because you don't know what's happening, you're, you know, you're on the back, right? So this is a, this is a, this is a good position. You, you end it up here, okay guys? So the back take is very simple. You're going to drive this under his back, okay? So very, very close to it. And now you're going to sit back 
and you're gonna pull him onto you. Okay? So you're gonna be sitting just pull. And as you pull, I'm going to put in the hooks. Now I also want to choke him. Okay? So I'm here. Okay? Here it becomes a game of hands. So I'm not gonna straight away try to choke him because he can fight. First I wanna get his hands out of the game. Okay? How? This hand, I'm just gonna catch here, control, put it down, okay? This hand, I'm gonna pretend to choke him, like say he's, he's gonna grab on it, I'm gonna push it down, I'm gonna get it behind here. Now look at this guy, his neck is open, I have one hand, he has none. This is the goal time. And I'm just gonna go under his neck, like so, okay? And now I'm gonna use one hand to finish. Okay, I'm going to put my head behind and I'm going to squeeze and I'm using 5%. Uh, my name is Ivan Evatovic. Um, I am originally from Hungary, but I've been living in this beautiful place, uh, Sarawak, for more than 25 years. Um, and I'm currently the head coach for Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for Studio, Studio 23 here in Kuching. Jiu-Jitsu is my passion. Um, I've been doing it for more than 13 years and actually one of the reasons um, I love it so much is because the way it makes me move. So for me uh, it is a martial art but it's all, it's, it is also a movement practice. Uh, for me the movement part puts the art into martial art. I ended up in Kuching Sarawak uh, through uh, actually my father. My dad was a swimming coach and towards the end of his career uh, he wanted to work somewhere overseas, so an offer came in from Sarawak and actually we didn't know anything about Borneo and Sarawak except that it is the land of headhunters. This was in uh, 1993 December. I still remember uh, it was snowing in Hungary and one of the first shock was coming from a European winter into this tropical paradise. I, I, I fell in love with, you know, with the place really quickly. Um, and actually my jiu-jitsu journey is also related to my father's profession. Even though my dad was a swimming coach, I hated swimming and I really sucked at it. So thank God my dad didn't insist on me becoming a swimmer. But what he insisted on was me continuing some kind of a sport or athletic activity. So I tried different things and I think when I was in primary school I tried judo and I instantly fell in love with judo so once I moved here I came across Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and it was basically love at first sight. Um, I met uh, Nikolai and Katyusha um, it seems like a long time ago but actually it was <laughs> one year ago um, and um, I met them because uh, they turned up at one of my jiu-jitsu classes and actually for me that was very impressive because they are capoeira uh, practitioners and I was fascinated by their openness to study other um, movement practices um, so I find that very impressive and um, I, I always also believe that uh, you know just because you have your own particular uh, movement practice like in my case in Jiu Jitsu uh, there's so much we can learn from uh, other movement practices from other sports other ways of moving so I was very happy to attend uh, their workshop last week breakdown movements which is a big part of me teaching Jiu Jitsu you know trying to break down movements which a lot of the time you are moving out of instinct but when you're teaching someone new you really need to break it down and uh, you know Katusha and Nicola are really good at that um, and also one thing is, is moving efficiently, uh, which is a big part of Jiu-Jitsu. Um, because when you're efficient, uh, you're not using strength, you're not using um, uh, muscle, and you can last longer. So I always you know, tell my students to try to move more efficiently. And by attending uh, Nikola and Katusha workshop, that's exactly what they do. So even movements I have been doing for a long time, uh, they showed me better way of doing it. So for me that was very, very impressive because I can take that back to the dojo and show it to my students and of course also uh, use it you know, myself to become a more competent mover. So they look at movement holistically, they are very, very open-minded. Uh, you know, they, 
they do jiu-jitsu, they do tai chi, they do silat, and um, they don't have any judgment. And um, you know, for them, it's all about uh, the enjoyment of movement. And you know, that's the same thing for me as well. So. So I think that my, my greatest fear in life and in Jiu-Jitsu is not being able to live up to my potential mm. uh, because both in life and in Jiu-Jitsu my, my aim is to become the best version of myself um, and as a Jiu-Jitsu practitioner I want to become the best that I can be. I'm not, I'm not competing with anybody, you know. I don't, I don't want to be a world champion, but I want to be as good as I can be, um, given my physical, genetic, whatever limitations I might have. And same thing in life, you know. I want to be, you know, become the best version of myself. So um, I, I would say that that uh, is a great fear, but it's also a great motivation. And it's something that, that keeps me honest, because I think in life and in jiu-jitsu, it's so easy to become comfortable. You know, especially when you when you have achieved some things. You know, you you can beat most of the guys in the gym. You know, um, a lot of people fall into the mistake of just relying on their A game. You know, we call this the A game mentality. Once you develop a game that you can beat most people, you stop growing. And you know, the same thing happens in life. You get a comfortable job. You know, uh, you know, you get a good salary. And then, you just, and then you stop exploring and you just kind of, you know, go stagnant. So, yeah, stagnation uh, and not growing are probably my greatest fears. I got into Jiu-Jitsu because of MMA, because I, I watched early UFC tapes and I realized how effective it was in a no rules or limited rules fight. And, and then the deeper I got into Jiu-Jitsu, the more interested I was just in the grappling part and not so much in the MMA part. But now that I'm getting older, I feel that it is part of my Jiu-Jitsu journey to do at least one fight, one MMA fight, where I can use my Jiu-Jitsu to, to fight in a situation where almost everything is allowed, you know? And kind of, kind of to honor, I guess, the roots of Jiu-Jitsu. So, um, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm afraid of it, you know, but it's something that, you know, it, it definitely scares me a little bit. It's definitely something I will need to prepare, uh, but I feel that this is something I, I have to do uh, before time runs out. You want to go as low as possible, but you need to drag him with you, right? So you are just waiting, waiting, and you are pulling him down, pulling him down. And when you're really low, that's when I'm going to... Okay, because the distance traveled is going to be less. Also, that you deal with a problem. Many of you have problems with catching really high. And again, the problem with that is your catch, your, your traction is not as strong, right? So if I catch here, pull it up, pull your head, it's, it's, it's really easy. If I catch here, pull it up, I can really follow, right? So in, in an actual fight, when 
everybody's sweating, those things are very important, right? <laughs> that, that, that one second or more makes the difference between a takedown and a not takedown. So you have to be precise. Uh, one more thing is the direction you need to be moving in, okay? So, I see some of you, you are like pushing into him, it's very hard to get it. The sleeve will be moving away. So in this case, you're creating the position by pulling and by rounding. You're going round and up and then it's there. Okay? So you have to be pulling towards you and you are going in a circle. In judo, my sensei used to say, you want to make them fall asleep. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like almost like, like you, have, you are dancing uh, or in hypnosis, you know? You're like, I'm not really fighting. We are just moving around. We are just moving around. It's you know? There are some beautiful jiu-jitsu documentaries I would recommend. Uh, most of them are available on YouTube for free. Uh, one of them is called The Choke. And The Choke chronicles Hicks and Grace's fight at uh, one of the Pride events, I believe. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure if it was Pride, but anyway, one of the early MMA fights in Japan. And it really shows his spirit and his preparation and a lot of the essence of jiu-jitsu. So Choke, the documentary. Another one is called Arte Suave, which is, uh, means the gentle art, which is Jiu-Jitsu translated. Um, and Arte Suave is a beautiful documentary about the Jiu-Jitsu scene in Brazil in, I would say, mid-1990s to late-1990s. And it's really nicely done in a kind of Sophia film. And uh, many of the big names of today were just starting out at the time. And you know the beaches in Copacabana and the whole Brazilian vibe. So that's a very beautifully uh, made documentary. Among movies, um, there is actually one movie that I think has done a good job with Jiu Jitsu. It's called Red Belt. Red Belt, and that's a very nicely done movie about a Jiu Jitsu teacher. And I think I, th I think it's a pretty well made movie. So that's worth looking to. Um, in terms of books, I would I would recommend. Uh, one particular book, which is written by someone I, I greatly admire, it's called um, Training Wheels, as in training wheels when you do the bicycle and you have the training wheels. This is a chronicle of a female jiu-jitsu practitioner who decides to give up her comfortable corporate job in Chicago and she goes on a road trip around the United States to train jiu-jitsu without any specific aim. And this is her story of, of how she made the decision and what she got out of this particular story. Hi, uh, I'm Joanna. Um, they know me as Joey here. Uh, we're at Studio 23 in uh, Kuching. So I've been learning Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I've stopped counting, but I think I've been learning for about nine or ten years. Um, how I started was that initially when I came to Studio 23, um, they had like a boxing based uh, self-defense program for a little bit of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu inside. So I started learning that and after about a couple of years, um, my teacher asked me whether I was interested to join the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu class here because there was another girl who did not have a partner. So he asked me to come in and be a partner for her. So I came, I tried it and I liked it, but I also realized I sucked. So. Um, but at that time, like my schedule was really good, uh, and it allowed me to uh, kind of come here more often to train Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And since then, uh, it's been quite a journey. Um, I started Brazilian Jiu Jitsu uh, mainly because of the self defense aspect. And one of the things that's really addictive about it is that you kind of learn that even though you're smaller and you may not be as strong, but using Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, it can be a multiplier of what you have, you know, and it can help to even make the playing field more even. And as somebody who's smaller and also who's a female as well, and you know, crime, most of the crime victims uh, tend to be women as well. So for me, it makes sense for me to learn more Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So after a few years of doing this, um, I heard that there was a MMA competition in Malaysia. Um, at that time, it was uh, kind of a new thing, but it was a Malaysia-wide thing. And for the first few years, they didn't open it up to women. But in the third year, they decided, hey, there's a lot of interest from women as well. We'll open it for women. So at the back of my mind, I was already thinking, in a self-defense situation, somebody's going to be wanting to punch me and kick me. So 
one way for me to find out where I need to improve my Brazilian Jiu Jitsu if I want to use it for self defense is to go against somebody who's trying to punch me and kick me. So I talked to my coach and I decided to join a competition. And what happened was that uh, I had about, I think, four, four opponents. So from when I joined that competition, my very first match in that competition was actually my first MMA competition ever. So uh, <laughs> it was an interesting experience because uh, I, I've never, I was training Muay Thai during that time as, as well, but my primary game was still Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So uh, my coach at that time, Albert Lim, um, he was very good at strategy and he used what I knew in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and he used what he knew I knew in Muay Thai and he came up with a game for me. And what happened was that we used that strategy and we ended up, I ended up becoming the first women's champion for that competition. So what's amazing about it is that um, I compared to my opponents I went against, I had less training than them and I was also a lot older than them. So if you're talking about self-defense situation or even a competition situation, that's already a setback already because you're older, you know, and you've not been training as long, you're not as experienced. But thanks to my coach and thanks to his knowledge of how to apply Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in that kind of situation, that's a very big part of how I ended up becoming the champion. And it was also because of my training partners here as well, like the way how we train. Um, our culture in Studio 23 is that we want to help each other grow because when we help each other grow, we ourselves, we're forced to grow so that we can we can meet everybody where they are so that way everybody keep lifting up each other. So because of that, <laughs> against all odds actually, because I was the underdog, I wasn't expected to win. But because of that, you know, because my coach, my teammates, um, we pulled off quite, I guess you could say, an upset. So that was a lot of fun to do. Um, and I'm still, I'm not doing MMA now, but it's at the back of my mind. And I would like to do it again someday because my focus is still, uh, still self-defense. Um, I'm still living Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu um, because this, it's a never-ending journey, you know. So yeah, give it a try. In terms of defending against the strike and, the, and, and kicks and things like that, well, there are different ways how not to get hit when somebody's trying to hit you. So we employ those, like for example, if I'm too close to you, you can't hit me. Likewise, if I'm too far from you, you can't hit me. If I'm to your side, you can't hit me. If I'm to your back, you can't hit me. So we employ a mixture of those strategies as well. Um, also making sure that um, I was in a position where I could absorb the hits, I mean, you don't want to stay there and absorb, you know what I'm saying? You just stay there in a certain position as long as you need to so that you can move on to a better position. Um, and this is something that is emphasized quite a lot in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, which is you don't attack somebody head on in a position where they are strong and you're not as strong. The idea is to get to a position where they can't use their strengths or where you can use what you have to overcome them. So, um, I like this this is quite a general concept but that was in general like the strategy that we applied for the MMA because um, a lot of the my opponents I went against they were there were some who actually had more training in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu than me but um, they didn't have the kind of conditioning I had in terms of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu as well as in Muay Thai as well so because of that um, I be my personal belief was that when it comes to the because it's it's not all fun in games you know I mean after after it you laugh and you you, you you relive the moments but when you're going in there it can be quite suffering so you have to push through the suffering you know and if you're not used to being to suffering in that sense then you don't find a way to push through it so I believe that because of the training I had with BJJ and also with my Muay Thai instructors as well they put me in the place of suffering for really long. Mm -hmm. So what happened was that it kind of became second nature for me to accept, okay, this is not a good position, so I have to fight a little bit, I have to fight harder now so that I'm not in this position where I have to suffer. So because of that, I believe that that was what gave me the victory in the finals because my final opponent, she had, um, she was a former, former state boxer as well and my personal belief was that she was actually more skilled in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu than me, but 
um, I believe the difference that made it was not just, I mean, in terms of strategy, but I believe that she wasn't used to suffering as much. I'm not, I'm not gifted. I'm not physically gifted. I'm not, I'm not intellectually gifted. I'm not flexible. I started martial arts at a really late age. It takes me, I would say, two or three times as long to learn something. So because of that, I kind of learned how to suffer and push through it. And one thing Albert said um, that really um, put a light bulb on in my head as well was that he said perseverance is a talent too. You know, so once he said that, that kind of uh, that kind of mm, put a light bulb on in my head, and I realized that hey, yeah, you know, I may not be strong, I may not be fast, I may not be flexible, I may have started this really late, but you know, <laughs> I'm a tough son of a bitch. So I, I believe that that's that's what gave me the victory. I'm, uh, what I do now is that I work mainly for a news-based website, so I'm, I'm an editor. So uh, it's quite interesting. Um, I, yeah, so I spend a lot of time in front of the computer and uh, sometimes there's a bit, because I'm in the news industry, so everything's deadline driven. So sometimes it can be a bit of a challenge to um, balance training and work as well but every time I come for training I don't regret it you know so um, and I think that it's it's an investment like whether it's Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or any other type of martial art or even something that's movement based something that's dance you know something that allows you to express yourself to get moving to get connected between your mind and your body and your heart I believe that it is good for your soul so you know uh, if I can do this at my age, like this year I'm 40 years old, and I started I started martial arts really really late, you know. I started competing also really really late. But if I can do this, and I'm relatively injury free, uh, I had the flexibility of a table, a wooden table, but I can do this. I think anybody can do this, you know. Yeah. So don't be afraid. Just find a good a good place where you can grow and learn, and everybody's is is interested and happy to see you improve you know and of course you have to do, be willing to do the same for them as well I believe that it can enrich your life so you know don't be afraid just go for it and try it you know ah, ah. This for the ball. Be a ball. perfect good nice yes use your frame excellent excellent Okay, hip as hip like Usha, remember from, from every, every hip, from. hip, from every hip, hip out, yes, hip, 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 yes, yes, good, yes, like Usha, yes, good, now you are on top of it, nice. Now you're back. Now you're back. You're back where we start. Alright, so now remember, I want you to stand up again, but watch out for her trick, watch out for her trick, yeah? Remember, she's going to try to sweep you, let me stand up. Open her leg. Push down the knee back, Usha. Oh, you can do that. Okay. Alright. Nice. Watch your balance, back, Usha. Good. Nice. Feel her energy. Good. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Never mind. Good. Yeah. Back, Usha. Try to go back on top. Yes! Good. That was a really good switch. Good switch. Again, same thing. If she locks her leg, you stand up. He cannot hurt you. I mean, he will be. Yes, people are good. Okay, put some pressure. Good, good. So, let's assume he's in my close guard and he's, he has a, a biceps control. So, a lot of people do this in close guard, right? It's kind of biceps control. So, the first thing you're going to do is this. You're going to free this and I'm going to free, feed this arm here, here. And I'm going to get double this control. Okay? Now, double, once I have double this control, I'm going to get my corner tie. How? Look, I'm going to use my legs, I'm going to pull him in, and I'm going to get my control here. Okay? So just like exactly what we did, go over. Now, try to get out of this. This is very hard. This is really good control. Okay? Now, you see, when I have the collar, now I have his posture broken. And now, I push this into the sternum, and I'm going to hold this leg over here okay if you have problem you can put this on the hip to get 
up high. Okay, so you want, you want to be here. All right. Now from here, the finish is really simple. What you're gonna do is you can actually let the hand go. Okay, keep this on. Keep this on. Okay, let the hand go. Grab here, and you're gonna be rotating up into this position. Once you are here, keep this wedge. I'm gonna lock it up. And it's an immediate strangle. Okay, you're ready. Awesome. Go.